our service. Uh, we also want to welcome all those of you who are uh, online and participating in this service. God richly bless you for tuning into our channel. And his favor is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to start a series uh, that uh, I have labeled uh, Sounds of Lepers. Sounds of Lepers. And um, we want to look at part one of this series, Sounds of Lepers. Uh, turn with me to Joel chapter one from verse one to verse four. The book of Joel, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4, I'm going to read a, a series of scriptures. Amen. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Bethuel, hear this, you old man, and give ear all you inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. That which the palm of worm have left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust have left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm have left hath the caterpillar eaten. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, and we want to read uh, a narrative there, uh, 2 Kings, chapter 6. And it came to pass, uh, from verse 24, and it came, and it happened after this, that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army, and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cup of doves dropping for five shekels of silver. Then as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king said to her, What is troubling you? And she answered, This woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman that he tore his clothes and as he passed by on the wall, the people looked and uh, there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Then he said, God do so to me and more also if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. But Elisha was sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him and the king sent a man ahead of him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast to the door. It's not the sound of his master's feet behind him. And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Uh, chapter 7 from verse 1. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. 
Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. When they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Yet they said to one another, we're not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there. Not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out and they told it to the king's household inside. So the king arose in the night and said, Seven, let me tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore they've gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, please, let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, they may either become like all the multitude of Israel that are left in it, or indeed, I say, they may become like all the multitude of Israel from those who are consumed, so let us send them and see. Therefore, they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrian had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So it happened that as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, two seers of barley for a shekel and a seer of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gates of Samaria. Then that officer had answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him for the people trampled him in the gate and he died. Hallelujah. I want us to read a third scripture, which is Psalm 89 from verse 15 uh, to verse 18. Psalm 89 from verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted, for the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One is our, of Israel is our king. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word, for the entrance of your word brings light, deliverance, and healing. Thank you for sending forth your word for everyone under the sound of my voice. Let the healing of God, let the miracles of God, let the breakthroughs of God uh, uh, characterize those who receive this word 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Sounds of lepers. This season is the season of trumpets. We're ramping up towards atonement and tabernacles. Amen. And um, uh, the Lord signaled uh, to me that we're already at a time, a time when sounds uh, are made, sounds uh, uh, that should bring God's people to a certain order, to a certain order. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the scripture tells us, uh, 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 like we read in, in Joel chapter uh, uh, 1, uh, a, a series of uh, uh, manifestations that are linked or that are significant of the process in which uh, 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 the locust develops from uh, egg stage to mature locust. Amen. And um, we see uh, a series of events where the scripture tells us that um, uh, uh, what one uh, uh, stage of locusts, and when locusts come to infest a land, what they do is that every stage of their development into mature locusts, every stage uh, has an impact that it makes in devouring a vegetation. Those who are in especially Eastern Africa, uh, know of the kinds of dev devastation that locusts can make. And uh, when they come, they come in, their, uh, with in all their stages of development, all right? And uh, uh, they're known as the, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the locust. And uh, uh, in the scripture we read in Joel chapter 1, the scripture says that uh, what each regiment, each stage of locust will, will devour and leave over, the next stage of locust are going to eat. And what uh, uh, a third uh, 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 stage of locust uh, will leave, that's what the fourth is going to devour. So the, by the time that locusts have uh, invaded a vegetation, uh, there is literally nothing left. The vegetation is eating up uh, both the outer vegetation, uh, the, uh, the vegetation at their uh, flowering stage and, this and the, and the, and the, uh, the fruits, everything completely devoured by these four stages. And these four stages speak of four regiments, four regiments uh, uh, of the devourer or the destroyer, hallelujah, which is how uh, the kingdom of darkness operates when there is a judgment against a land. And um, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, in, in uh, 2020 that the the pandemic became obvious uh, to uh, most of us in the, uh, especially here in the United States. Uh, uh, and um, at that time, I, I spoke God's word, and it's, it's on tape everywhere, uh, that that was a beginning, the beginning of a series of judgments. And um, uh, uh, we saw that the pandemic, uh, 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 manifested co COVID-19 and various variants uh, of COVID-19 uh, 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 followed. And um, uh, 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 when we thought that uh, it was over and done with COVID, we see a war in Ukraine that uh, 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 is now impacting the globe uh, economically, all right? We see 
all kinds of issues, logistical issues, supply chain issues uh, all across the globe. And then uh, uh, now we have uh, uh, another virus, the monkey virus, monkey, mon monkey pox virus, all right? And then we have um, also uh, 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 new variants of the COVID uh, still uh, uh, coming up. So at that time, I said, it was just a beginning of a series of judgments. And um, uh, people will wonder, why are you proclaiming this? Why are you saying this? Well, I am a man of God. And um, uh, what the uh, uh, word of God unveils gives us an insight into certain patterns. We know how uh, certain manifestations uh, 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 okay, especially if nothing is done uh, to reverse uh, those manifestations. And now, uh, the latest that we're hearing across the globe is a drought. A major drought in Europe and here in America. All across the region of Texas, uh, uh, the southwest, there is a major, major drought. And a drought, you know, uh, for some of us who are here in the northeast, uh, from which I'm preaching this morning, uh, we uh, may not pay attention to what is going on uh, uh, in the other side of America, as well as in Europe, many people in America don't even tune in to know what is going on uh, in other parts of the world, all right? Uh, so you may not know what's going on, but these are all uh, signals, manifestations. These are manifestations which, if you don't pay attention to, uh, uh, then uh, uh, you will be living in a fool's paradise. One thing after the other. One judgment after the other. One may not affect you, but the other may affect you. Some people were not impacted by COVID. Uh, it didn't touch any of their family members. But some people were severely impacted by COVID. Others are impacted by these drought, wildfires that have ravaged many communities. For some people, this is the end of all that they have worked for uh, all their lives. You may not pay attention, but the Lord sent me this morning to begin to sound the trumpet, to sound the trumpet to America to sound the trumpet because this is the season of trumpets. And uh, 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 whether you're paying attention to what is going on or not, this is the time to pay attention. The scripture says there was a scenario in, in, in Israel, in Samaria. Samaria, uh, and uh, the scripture says... Uh, there was a drought, there was a famine, uh, the same condition that is taking place, uh, um, excuse me, the same condition that is taking place in, in, in certain parts of our world uh, as I speak this morning. But this drought was an artificial drought because the Syrians, uh, uh, with ben Haddad as their king, had besieged the city of Samaria. It's just like how Russia has besieged uh, uh, Ukraine. And so nothing coming in and nothing going out. And the scripture says it got so bad, so bad, that the most valuable uh, commodity, the most valuable source of food was the excretion of doves. 
the excretion of animals. That was the only source of food. There was no real food. And so there were two women who made a deal amongst them because uh, obviously they had run out of money by uh, dung to eat. And so uh, they made a deal. They said, you know what? We're going to die anyway. Uh, our children are so lean, so bony. You see, when you see the scriptures of, 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 of uh, areas in the world uh, that are uh, uh, stricken with famine and drought and, and malnourished children, so lean, they see that their children are at the verge of death. So they made a deal. Let's boil uh, our sons, uh, but we'll boil them in series. Today we're going to eat uh, uh, my son, tomorrow we're going to eat your son. All right? When we have finished eating the little flesh that is left of their skin, then we move on to yours. Maybe we can prolong our lives as we wait for uh, 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 hoping that this drought, this situation is going to come to an end. And the scripture says, when they made the deal, one, uh, they ate one woman's child, and then the when that meat was uh, finished, the, uh, the other woman went and hid her child. <laughs> After helping the other woman cannibalize her son, now she was hiding her son. So uh, this uh, aggrieved woman went to tell the king that look at what has happened. I made a deal with this woman and we ate my son. And now when she had to produce a son for us to eat, she has hidden him. And the scripture says when the king heard it, he, 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 his jaw dropped. He passed out. I mean, uh, uh, he, he just uh, uh, tore his clothes. He, he was just everything that you can imagine. He was angry. He was, but his anger was not towards the, the woman who hit the child, uh, his anger was against the fact that there was a man of God in the city. And the man of God had not done anything to change the situation. So he sent a messenger to go take out the head of the man of God. The man of God was Elisha. And the scripture says that, um, and um, I'll leave some parts of this narrative uh, because for four weeks we shall be focusing on specific aspects of this, this, this drought that hit Samaria. And so uh, the scripture says the man of God gave a prophetic word. He gave a word. He said, tomorrow about this time. Tomorrow about this time, things are going to change. Food is going to become cheap, available, and so cheap. And so the scripture says, uh, the minister of finance, uh, 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 upon whom the king depended for financial advice, he was uh, 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 a, a professional economist. Right, he responded to the word that the man of God gave. He said that uh, even if God should open the windows of heaven, it is not possible for this word to become a reality. Even if God throws open the windows of heaven. This word is not possible. And that's going to be my focus this morning. The, <laughs> the minister of finance, the economist, he 
reacted to God's word in doubt. He doubted God's word. He doubted God's word. That is, and that was reflective of the first condition for which there was a drought, a famine. There was that was uh, 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 orchestrated by that besiegement. One of the reasons why God's people will be besieged by the enemy to the degree that there is a drought, no food. So we'll say it's an artificial drought. And I believe that's what a lot of us can relate to because, you know, when there is an artificial drought, uh, 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 it, it, it means to most of us who live in cities today, uh, 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 the economy is in bad shape. Right? The economy is in bad shape. So the rain is falling. All right? The weather is uh, 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 moving along with the seasons perfectly, but there is a hardship. A hardship because the enemy has besieged. Has besieged. So when coronavirus came, uh, the rain was falling everywhere. Uh, farmers were planting food everywhere. Uh, the uh, uh, people were working from home and from wherever. But there was a crippling effect. Some people could not work. You couldn't go to certain places. Certain things could not be done. Because there was a plague. You know, uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, get deceived by uh, uh, natural manifestations uh, and uh, artificial circumstances uh, and uh, uh, find a rationale for everything that is going on. Many a times, uh, because we keep rationalizing what is going on, uh, we fail to, to get to the root of why what is happening is happening. And so the Lord came to me with a word, uh, and he said, uh, uh, tell them that it's a series. Uh, uh, what the palmer worm have left, that the canker worm is going to eat up. What the canker worm has ate, that the caterpillar is going to eat up. What the caterpillar has left out, that's the, eh, it's going to be a series. That's the word that God gave me. If we don't pay attention, and the first reason why the enemy could besiege God's people, and yet there was a man of God in the city, is because the people were living in doubt. The people were living in doubt. They were Israelites. They were God's people. There are believers in the land. People who call themselves Christians. And yet, our lifestyles are a manifestation of classical doubt. Unbelief. And that was expressed by the uh, response of the minister of finance, uh, that professional economist, to uh, the word of the Lord. We're going to church every Sunday, every now and then. We hear the word on television. We hear the word on the internet. We, the word of God is just about everywhere on radio. Hallelujah. Uh, it's so available. The question is, do we have faith in God's word? Do we believe the word of God? Or we just listen? We hear it. But it does not trigger 
our faith. It doesn't trigger our faith. Now, this is important, and if you have a pen, you can write this down. Whatever we do in life orchestrates sounds. Either as an expression of our faith or doubt. Whatever we do in life orchestrates sounds. Either as an expression of our faith or doubt. Whatever. Wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing right now, uh, uh, it's either an expression of your faith in God or your doubt, your unbel unbelief. And these two sounds are constantly being made by your life. How you go to work, how you work, how you conduct yourself, how you relate to people, they're all sounds. They're all sounds in the spirit realm. Various kinds of sounds manifest as you carry yourself, how you relate to life. It all produces sounds, sounds, sounds of faith or sounds of doubt. Sounds of faith or sounds of doubt. And this is the season of trumpets where uh, the priests will sound trumpets uh, uh, to uh, uh, commemorate divine order, the need for God's people to come in alignment with the order of God. The first order of God is our response to the word of God. Our response to the word of God. That's the first, the first order. How do we relate to God's word? Do we relate by faith or we doubt it? When we doubt it, we ignore it. When we doubt it, it does not influence what we do and how we conduct ourselves. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 22 to verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 22 to 24. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of a terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And uh, under the firmament were their wings straight. The one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host, when they stood they let down their wings. I want to read verse 24 again. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. Hallelujah. Now, this is... The revelation of God's glory as it was shown to Ezekiel, hallelujah, uh, at the beginning of his ministry. God unveiled to the prophet Ezekiel, he was also a priest, but a prophet. Uh, the scripture says God unveiled the manifestation of his glory uh, uh, in several ways. Uh, and one of the ways uh, that God unveiled the manifestation of his glory, God showed him the, the living creatures that were in the presence of God. 
Amen. And uh, we see uh, that in, in verse 22 to 23, uh, they had wings. Uh, and the scripture says uh, uh, in verse 24, which I want to pay attention to. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings. I heard the noise. In other words, I heard the sound of their wings. Their wings made a sound. And the sound was like the noise of great waters or the sound of great waters. That is, the elements, their, their, their move in the spirit was the sound of great waters. That means a resonance of the elements with the sound of their wings, of their move. And uh, as the voice of the Almighty, as the voice of the Almighty, the creatures making a sound as the voice of the Almighty, as the voice of speech. That means a clear, intelligible sound. That could be heard, distinguished as the noise of an host. That is a troop, an army. And when they stood, they let down their wings. So we see that the glory of God is characterized by sounds. Sounds that articulate the words of God, the judgments of God. Last week I spoke about how that the Ark of the Covenant was the place of God's glory. It was the place of his decisions, which we also uh, consider his judgments, all right, his decisions. So when God has made a decision, it's projected by these uh, living creatures that were in God's presence. Uh, they move with what God has decided, what God has said uh, is what becomes their move that impacts the elements, that impacts uh, the winds, uh, the waters. Uh, uh, it is the voice of the Almighty. It is the voice of speech of what God is saying, what God is declaring. It is the noise of an host, an army. An army, the army of God, oh, the, the, the warring angels of God. Uh, uh, that sound that moves the elements, it is the words of God's decisions. The words of God's glory, hallelujah. In God's glory, we find his goodness. But in his glory also, we find his decisions. And his decisions are this series of, of judgments that have been, have been uh, uh, programmed for our world today. And that was the scenario in Samaria. A series of judgments. And those series of judgments was a reflection in the lives of four lepers. Four lepers. Before the Syrians came, God caused the condition of his people to be manifested as a leprosy in four people. A leprosy. You see, uh, leprosy is a disease uh, uh, contagious. It's a disease when you had, you couldn't come into the presence of God. You couldn't come into the tabernacle. You couldn't come into the temple. You were estranged from God. So four people contracted leprosy. And the people in Samaria did not discern that leprosy. 
because that was the uh, manifestation of their spiritual condition. Four different conditions. And today I am looking at one of the conditions. And that condition is the condition of doubt. Doubt. God sending his word through his ministers, through his servants every day. It's so available. Any channel on which you turn uh, early in the morning, uh, you, you, uh, there is a chance you're going to hear uh, the gospel being preached. If you say, well, I missed the, uh, the morning uh, uh, series of ministry. Uh, uh, you turn to the to the radio or to the internet or, or Christian radio or Christian television that is 24 hours and you will find a convicting word you will find a message from God hallelujah you will hear a message that God has sent through his servants and the people kept hearing and it simply became their feel-good point. Their feel-good point. That means, uh, uh, after all, I make time to hear the word of God. But did it change you? Did it change the sound that comes out of your life? Did it change your next step? Did it change your next move? Did it change your life? Did it change your relationships with others? Did it make a, uh, an impact on you? Hallelujah. So because uh, in Samaria, like I said, there was a man of God there. And uh, uh, he was preaching to them, but they were not listening. Or they were uh, hearing, but not hearing. And so the first uh, manifestation of that condition was that four men became lepers. They caught leprosy. They became estranged from the presence of God. But because it was just four individuals, like I just said this morning, because we're here on the East Coast and uh, the, the drought is in Texas and uh, the, the Southwest in, in certain areas. Doesn't affect us. We still go to our taps, open our faucets, and, and water rounds out. You still have a job. You're listening to me. You still have uh, income coming in. You don't... Uh, uh, Got to go uh, carry a bucket to go look for water. COVID didn't touch you. Neither has monkeypox affected anybody you know. Right now, there's an emergency declared in California for monkeypox virus. But because you're not in California, probably uh, this is the first time you're hearing it. There's some people who are traveling all the way to Canada just to have a, a, a vaccination from monkeypox, traveling all the way. You can imagine why they will fly from some other part of the world uh, 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 to Canada just to have a, a vaccination to protect them, that means that wherever they are living and having their uh, dwelling, there is, a, there is a, the plague is very evident, very ugly, devastating. But it hasn't touched you. So there were four individuals who uh, the condition, spiritual uh, depravity, the 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 spiritual uh, condition of Israel manifested in their lives. And, uh, well, because it's not me, because it's not my family members, uh, well, uh, uh, that's their plight. And when it happens like that, they have to be driven out of the city. 
They can't live within the city walls. Otherwise, the plague will spread amongst the people. So they cast them out of the city. And today we are talking about one of those lepers. One of those lepers, the root of his leprosy was the condition of doubt. The condition of doubt. There was a man of God in Samaria. Elisha was there, uh, but they doubted the man of God. And that was expressed uh, uh, by the minister of finance and economic planning. He says, God cannot. God cannot do it, so I will do it uh, myself by my estimation. God cannot help. And we see that in, in all that is taking place, there is doubt that runs, runs across the board. Doubt of God's word. Doubt that God's word can change your situation. Doubt that God's word can heal. Doubt that God's word can deliver you. There is a doubt. And that doubt is not the fact that you openly uh, say, I doubt God. But it is the actions you take after you have heard the word of God. The things you say after you have heard the word of God. The moves you make uh, totally contradictory to what has been spoken. So, uh, the sounds, uh, 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 my preaching today uh, uh, is a word from Almighty God. Uh, it's a word that God has spoken, and so I heard those sounds in the spiritual realm, and what I heard uh, is what uh, as a man of God God has trained me to hear and bring it to you uh, but the question is what are you going to do after you have heard this message after you've heard the word are you going to do things that is contradictory to the move of the spirit of God are you going to be at loggerheads? Uh, are you going to lock horns? Uh, are you going to be moving contrary to a word that impacts the elements, the angels, the hosts of God? Are you going to act contrary? To what God is saying. Joel chapter 2 verse 1. God told the prophet Joel. He says blow you the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. I start again. Joel chapter 2 from verse 1. Blow, blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. That's what I am doing this morning. I'm blowing a trumpet. I'm sounding an alarm. I am, I am giving you a signal of what's taking place in the spiritual realm. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. They have not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more uh, after it. Even to the years of many generations. Blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. Sound an alarm. Hallelujah. And that's uh, my message to America. To God's people. From the pulpit of God. Sound an alarm. Let the people tremble. Let the people be afraid. Because there is looming, a looming series of circumstances. One may not catch you, but certainly 
uh, uh, with four looming uh, uh, kinds of judgment. Uh, uh, if you don't reposition yourself, hallelujah, you may be caught in an evil net. You may be caught up in an evil net. But this morning I've come uh, to sound alarm to God's people. For Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What God will do, what God will do for those who will take his word seriously, for those who will allow his word to trigger faith. Let this word trigger faith in you orchestrate faith in your heart hallelujah because god is good his decisions uh, uh, unveil his goodness to those who walk in faith those who fall in line uh, uh, those who align their ways uh, to his word faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Hallelujah. And let, and let it change the sound that is coming out of your life. Believe God. Believe God's word. Let it change your life. Let it change your action. Let it change your way. Let it change. Hallelujah. Let it change your life. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which were se are seen were not made of things which do appear. Faith is the substance your belief is what is going to uh, 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 bring you in alignment with the entirety of the elements. The sound of the Lord, the sound of God's word is as mighty waters. Hallelujah. It's what is going to protect you because it. Uh, the host of God, the angels of God uh, are in alignment with God's decisions. And God's decisions is what comes through the word. Faith is the substance. Is the substance. Is the substance of your healing. Is the substance of your deliverance. It's the substance of your breakthrough. It's your substance of your victory. It's the substance of your miracle. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance. Fall in line. Fall in line. Fall in line. With the word. The scripture says, for by faith God created. In the midst of judgment, God is creating. In the midst of judgment, God is doing new things. In the midst of the judgment, God will preserve those who align themselves by faith. Those who believe, those who receive, those who allow the, the word to change their direction, their discourse, their language, their, their, their way. Scripture says... And so, the day the word was given by the man of God, the minister of finance says, this cannot be. But somehow, the lepers who were outside the city walls, the four people who had incurred the wrath of God's judgment, the four people who... Uh, uh, were the first to experience the manifestation of doubt. They had the sound of that word. They had it. 
These were the people who had been ostracized, cast out, hallelujah, thrown out of the city. But they heard the sound of the prophetic word in their spirit. The same day, the same day that the word was issued by the prophet of God, it reverberated in the spiritual realm and they, they caught it. Oh, hallelujah. They caught it. And they said to themselves, why stay we here till we die? Why stay we here till we die? People in the city who heard the, the, the word of God, they doubted. But that word made a sound. Because that word and what I am preaching today is making a sound in South America. It's making a sound in Central America. It's making a sound in Hawaii, in the Pacific. It's making a sound in Europe. It's making a sound in the Far East. It's making a sound in, Ire in Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's making a sound in North America. It's making a sound, hallelujah, in every ocean. Because it's the sound of many waters. It's the voice of Almighty God. It is, hallelujah, the noise of an host. God's army. The four lepers heard the sound in their spirit. And they decided that they were not going to allow their condition to define their situation. They were not going to allow their condition to define their destiny. Hallelujah. They're not going to allow their condition. Hallelujah. How, uh, what is your condition this morning? Don't let it define California. What's your condition this morning? Don't let it define. You're a farmer. You've, you've, you've lost your crops. Don't let it define. You may be a leper. You might have lost your home through the wildfires. You might have lost your business through the drought. You must have lost your church uh, through the through the through the drought uh, you must have lost your family through covid uh, you are like a leper outside the city walls uh, nobody can empathize uh, with what you are going through nobody can feel what you are going through because they're not going through what you are going through but there is a sound in the spirit realm there is a sound of god's voice there is a sound of the trumpet there is a sound that is reverberating across the globe. These lepers discarded their doubt. He says, come, let us fall on the enemy. Let us fall on the enemy. I like the way the King James puts it. Let us fall. And you notice that most times I keep going back uh, various versions of the Bible uh, because uh, of the context. Uh, hallelujah. It must fit the narrative properly. Hallelujah. Let us fall on the enemy. In many instances when that language is used, uh, it means let us attack the enemy. Let us attack the enemy of our situation. Let us attack the enemy of our condition. Let us attack the enemy of our frustration. Let us attack the enemy of our leprosy. Lepers were not accepted in Israel. They were not accepted anywhere. Let us fall on the enemy. The people heard the word of God, but they made no decision. The king made no decision. It was the lepers who made a decision. Let's confront the enemy. Let's attack the enemy. Let's deal with our situation. We may leave dealing with our situation. We may die, but let us deal with our situation. Let us not be indifferent. Let us not be... Uh, 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 subject ourselves to apathy. Let us deal. 
Let us deal. Let's, let's go after the enemy. And the scripture says, when they did that, the Lord caused the sound of their faith. <laughs> the sound of their faith to orchestrate an earthquake to orchestrate the sounds of horses and chariots I just told you that the voice of God uh, uh, triggers the army of the Lord. The Syrians uh, began to hear. They began to hear uh, the host of God, the angels, the army of God. Every step the lepers took uh, shook the earth. Uh, uh, it was the sound of God's army. Uh, Ah, the Syrians got frightened. Mm -mm. They said uh, the king of Israel has hired other uh, uh, nations against us. Uh, and they, they, they abandoned the food. They abandoned their tents, their horses, their donkeys. They abandoned and they started to run. They started to run. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Ah, let situations be defeated. Let God arise. Let every demonic activity on earth be defeated. Shout hallelujah. There was a sound. There was a sound. There is a sound that is going to come out of your life. The sound of faith. The sound of faith. Ah, a repented leper. A repented leper. One leper. One leper. One leper. One leper. Ah, said to the other lepers, I believe that God can do it. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And they agreed. They repented from doubt. The leper repented from doubt and so God used them God used every step they took uh, in line with their faith uh, in alignment with their faith uh, God took every step uh, and God uh, caused that sound uh, to reverberate uh, in the realm of the spirit because that was how God was moving uh, that was in line uh, with the word which Elisha had spoken uh, that was the word uh, that was the word uh, that was the word. Amen. That was the word. They felt it in their hearts. And they moved upon it. And God caused the Syrians to just hear the same sound. Oh, hallelujah. To hear the same sound. It wasn't a different sound. I want you to know that what is going to displace the enemy from your space is not a different sound from what you're hearing. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The same sound. The same sound is what's going to disconfit the enemy. It's the same, it's the same sound that is going to dismantle uh, the walls uh, and the barriers uh, and the chains uh, and the shackles uh, of sickness, disease, uh, demonic. Uh, the same word that you're hearing. The voice of that word that you're hearing. The sound that it makes. What it does in you. It will discomfit them, but it will bring you a breakthrough. It will scatter them, but it will put you together. Uh, 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 it will defeat them, but it will give you victory. At the very point, the very point, the very point where they are defeated is the very point where you're going to have your what? Your victory. No matter your situation. Your captivity is coming to an end because your captors, your captors, your captors are going to flee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. The same word. Same word. Bringing defeat on the enemy. Bringing defeat on those who operate doubt. Scripture says, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, when the lepers came, uh, they found provision. And then they decided to go and inform the king. And you know, the king made a decision. He says, Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, I put you in charge of these supplies, of this provision. And the scripture says, at that position, the people trampled him till he died. The people trampled the spirit of doubt. The man who, who projected that doubt in the face of God, he, he was destroyed. So you may be listening to me and say, oh, that uh, unknown preacher, that, that obscure preacher. I want you to know that if you doubt this word, uh, uh, you will be uh, 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 moving contrary to God. And you are either on God's side or you are against him. And if you're against God, you have declared your own judgment. But if you turn around and follow uh, God and, and bring your life in alignment, uh, the next step you make, the next move you make, the next word that comes out of your mouth, uh, if it's a reflection of your faith uh, in God's word, uh, hallelujah, then uh, you're going to be saved. Your family is going to be saved. Your children are going to be saved. Your business is going to be saved. Your career, your profession, whatever, your health, uh, you're going to be saved. You're going to be delivered. You're going to be healed. You're going to be set free. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Because there is a sound that must come out of your life in this season. There must be that sound. The sound of healing. The sound of deliverance. The sound of faith. Hallelujah. The sounds. The sounds of the spirit. Begin to talk to him. Hallelujah. Begin to talk to him. Yan teleberia tado shinda la bariata. Yerebe shinda la bakanda. Yerebe shinda la bajisha. Yerebe shinda la bajita. Begin to talk to him. Yet for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Talk to God. Yerebe shia. Yet arebe shia. Yerebe na boshia. Yerebe shia. Yan telebekea. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Let victory, let victory come to everyone who has heard the sound of faith, the voice of faith come through this broadcast. Let, let the healing of God, let the deliverance of God, mantala brustika, anyone who hears this word and 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 and, 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 and allows faith to arise uh, and, uh, and acts in faith. I decree healing. I decree victory over your situation. I decree miracles. Uh, hallelujah. Miracles, breakthroughs uh, to manifest for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, bring your life into the order of God's word. Uh, the order of faith. Uh, hallelujah. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance. Hallelujah. It's the substance of your victory. It's the substance of your deliverance. It's the substance of your healing. Believe and receive. Believe for with the heart we believe unto righteousness. With the mouth we confess unto salvation. Thank him. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. His word that will save you. Save your family. Thank you father for healing for victory, for miracles, for everyone under the sound of my voice. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. Thank you. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for testimonies. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.